from Tigerland. We never make it to the final siren call. At the time of the war, we're strong and we're bold. We're from Tigerland. Hall of Fame goes to Queen Lake Passed away in Melbourne at the age of 82. After a life devoted to his family, I'd now like to invite members of the Hafey family to bring out four Premiership Cups before the Tommy helped bring home to Richmond in 1967, 1969, 1973 and 1974 as the Tigers coach. Premiership players coached by Tommy have also joined the family on the ground here today. Tommy Hafey, a Richmond football club in Baltimore, coached the Tigers, Collingwood, Geelong and the Sydney Swans in a total of 522 VFL games. He had a huge influence on the lives of hundreds of league footballers and he inspired thousands of more throughout Australia with the vitality, the zest and the positive approach that were indeed his trademarks. Our thoughts are of course with Tommy's wife Maureen, daughters Rhonda, Karen and Joe, and their extended families at this time of sad loss. We ask you now to be honoured with our standing servant of our great game, after a life well lived, with a minute's applause for Tommy Hafey. The valiant never taste of death but once. Tommy Hafey was valiant in life and in death. Shakespeare went on. It seems to, him, to me most strange that men should fear seeing that death a necessary end will come when it will come. Tommy Hafey didn't have time to fear death. He was too busy living life. Still craving your kiss. I'm longing to linger to the dear. Just saying this. Sweet dreams till some lives find you. Sweet dreams that leave a behind you, but in your dreams, whatever they be, dream a little dream of me. Stars fading, but I linger on, dear, still craving your kiss. I'm longing to linger till dawn, dear. Quick to point out anything he didn't agree with, but equally quick to give praise. 
He was tough, he was strict, he was supportive and he was loving. We are proud of our dad and what he has achieved in the football world, from the grassroots to the big time, in the local communities and in the business world. However, the champion husband, father, father-in-law and grandfather he has been is beyond measure. We have laughed, lived, played and loved so deeply and we will forever cherish these times and reflect on them throughout our lives. I'd like to add um, that our mum has asked us to pass this message on to you all. He really did love you all. Thank you. Thank you. I'll watch hour after hour, day after day, of test cricket and mosquitoes. In between sunbaking on the deck down at tideways while listening to Magic 1278. <laughs> Growing up, I've never really appreciated past presence in my life. But now I see that I've taken for granted all these years. So he's always... Thanks, Pa. As Jimmy Buffett said in the song, he went to Paris. He had 82 years of perpetual motion. And I think that sums up Pa's life pretty well. I love you, Pa, and I will always miss you. In summer, sometimes, he'd come and pick us up without a shirt on, which got pretty embarrassing for a 12-year-old boy just starting high school. <laughs> my, my friend said he was the only grandfather that could pull this off. <laughs> when I was speaking to him, because of his und undivided attention, he made me feel like I was the only person in the room. And it's only now that he's gone that I realise how special it was to have such an affectionate influence so actively involved in my life. He called it as he saw it. I remember just this last summer, my auntie Jo, who just spoke, gave him this, like, this special handcrafted Italian whistle to use at his football trainings as a late Christmas present. After blowing it a few times, Pa put on the most disgusted face I've ever seen. He then, he then proceeded to give Auntie Jo her Christmas present back to her, <laughs> telling his bewildered daughter, don't worry about it, mate. <laughs> Seemingly, he was unimpressed with the sound of the whistle. <laughs> Until I was about five, I was petrified of him. <laughs> he was this very well-built guy with a strong voice, and for a young, shy girl like me, this is terrifying. As we got more used to him, and he got used to us, he started to impart his words of wisdom. If you all think about Tommy Hafey, you think about discipline. But really, it was all about structure and life lessons, little lessons and values. He taught us about decency and responsibility, his hatred of alcohol and tattoos, as well as the importance of family. Pa always had great wrinkles, even since he was born. But they've definitely gotten better with age. These wrinkles gave my cousin Sam and I endless joy. The two of us enjoyed teasing him by molding his wrinkles into funny faces. <laughs> Pa's laughing. My name is Jamie Hefeberg. I'm Tom Hefey's youngest grandson. Tom Hefey was a top bloke. He always had gusto in whatever he said. Whenever he passed the food bus, he'd always um, tell them that, you know, he didn't drink. So why would he need to blow the breathalyzer? <laughs> he always thought they were pretty stupid for pulling him off for it too. I've always heard stories of Tommy turning people's lives around, and he had a massive impact on my life. In his forever lasting motto. If it is to be, it is up to me. And he always said, put a circle around the word me, because that's where it always comes back to. Ten little words that precisely describe what Tommy was about. Live on, Tommy. And I can remember Tommy turning up to my uh, daughter Kara's engagement party, and he turned up just in a pair of shorts. No shoes, no top. My son-in-law said to him, aren't you wearing a shirt, Tommy? He said, I didn't think it was formal. <laughs> now, for those who don't know, Tommy drove a Jeep. Do you know that? He drove a Jeep. He drove a Jeep all over the country. 
He didn't buy a Jeep. He drove a Jeep. He shot a commercial for Jeep. The deal was that new Jeep every three months. Jeep figured that a man over 80 would drive to church on a Sunday and pick up the paper. Jeep figured that after three months it would have 1,500 k's on the clock and would be sold as a new car. Jeep didn't figure that after three months it would have 84,000 <laughs> on the clock. It would be set to the records. <laughs> Tommy drove a Jeep all right to every football club and netball club in the land. You'd run faster if chased by a crocodile. That's what he used to say to players when he thought they could run a lot faster than they were out in the field. He'd always answer the question, how do you like your tea, Tommy, with hot and strong? If not, I'll send it back, and he did. <laughs> He's so slow he couldn't catch Humphrey B. Bear. That was a player who just couldn't run. And of course, sensational but getting better was his favourite one. Tommy actually thought getting up at 5.20 in the morning and walking across the road in his speedos and swimming across Port Phillip Bay and back in icy water, and then running 10 k's, followed by a thousand sit-ups and a thousand push-ups, was a great way to start a day. He did convince me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, he saw himself as a beach inspector because then he'd walk along the beach to pick up syringes. His record was 38 in one day. He was really proud of that record. No gloves. Just put him in the towel. His first training session at Richmond as a coach was two laps of the tan. He said, do your best, and off we all went. We never saw him again, <laughs> except for the several players he lacked. <laughs> Those he lacked, please put up your hand in this room. <laughs> the second training session was 10 440s with 60 seconds break in between. And then the third one, this was on the Friday night, we trained Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And the third training session was 2200s over, well, 2200s I should say, with a 60 second rest. Tommy ran them all until he absolutely dropped because he had the little chunky legs and he, he ran those 400s and that's where the legend was made and everyone at the club said, well, how good is this? Because all of a sudden you had this coach who turned up and he's, he's beating everyone around the towns and he's beating everyone in the 400s and then he's beating everyone in the 200s. I mean, it was, it was quite remarkable and the legend was made. You know, nothing much has changed in football. Tommy's first game as coach of Richmond was against Carlton at Princess Park. And the siren didn't work at the end of the game. So nothing has changed in football. <laughs> and they couldn't find the cowbell to actually ring. We believe to this very day just a cult conspiracy. <laughs> the, game uh, the game actually continued on and a policeman on his horse charged out onto the ground to alert the umpire that the game had ended. Richmond fullback was a young man called Billy Walford. I played with him in the under 19s. He was playing fullback that day, just his fourth game of AFL football. Recalls that how he had to run around the horse to actually contest the ball. <laughs> that should have alerted the umpire that the game was over. <laughs> the Tigers won by six points, and of course, the hating year of the year. 